Okay, so that's the plane. That's the fuselage. You have two nice doors to access it. I did a mod. It has these screws and they come loose. So I taped it in the front, removed a bit here, so it's like a hinge. And in the back I used this screw and I have used some tape to grab it more easily. And you need both doors because when you want to install the battery you have to grab through. So you need both doors accessible, but it's fine. It even has a hole for your antenna. I mounted the GPS on top here, coming out of this little hole. You have access to the upper bay here where you can install your receiver. You have enough space for the autopilot itself and for all the cables. And one tip, if you have a Y cable for the ailerons, let the extensions stick out here, connect the, the servo cables when attaching the wing and then push it in. This way you don't have to open the, the door. I chose this plane because I was interested in this propeller mount. So basically you have a folding prop on a ball bearing ring that is attached in a gearbox and the, gear and the motor is on the bottom. So that's where the noise comes from and you lose a bit of efficiency with gears. I've seen guys using a belt driven system, a modification, I didn't want to spend too much time with the motor, I just see how, how well this works. Of course I had to add a lot of grease in this gearbox to not make things worse. It's plastic gears on the upper part and it's aluminum or steel, I think aluminum uh, on the motor shaft. I mean, I don't know. What are the advantages of a V-tail? Maybe some of you guys can comment me this. I Somehow I would have preferred a normal, a standard uh, elevator and rudder combination. There have to be some advantages of V-tails. Please comment. I'm curious to know them. Um, but as I've installed them, they work fine. For the building, uh, you just screw on these plastic parts. And I taped, I only taped the back fins here. I hope this works. Yeah, and in the front you have this whole plastic part and you have to have a lot of weight in the in the front. So that's that's here that here is okay. This camera gimbal and it's 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 somehow weird what they did. You have this this ball here and initially it is thought that you have one servo here and can tilt the cam. That's okay, tilting is cool. But then you have, inside you have another servo that is for roll axis and you don't need to steer the roll axis. It would have been nice to have a yaw movement, so you can look left and right, up and down. That I would have understood, but that the roll axis, I, I don't see any sense in this. So I just installed the, the up and down, the, the tilt servo here on the side, some cable ties, to firmly attach the cam. I'll show you the picture now. For the battery I use 5200 mA Multistar low C rating uh, 4 cell which has 430 grams and it's all the way in the front. I did remove some of the foam to be able to move the battery even further. It's, it's about here. Yeah, of course you get long flight times, at half an hour, up to an hour maybe. We will see. These are the wings, you can take them apart easily. And if you attach them to the plane, you have two hex screws here on the wing that will uh, secure the main spar so the wing can't move up. That's a nice and easy way to mount the wings on this plane. As I said, they have 1.8 meters of Wingspan, yeah, it's basically a good Sora. On a future flight, I can test the Arcbird's launch assist mode, which sounds, yeah, it sounds cool, but uh, on the same time, I'm afraid of it. It works like this: you activate it in the OSD launch assist, 
Then you as the pilot lay down your radio on the bench. You start running. As soon as the autopilot senses more than five kilometers of movement, it starts the throttle, throttles up, and you throw it and it will ascend um, until it is 30 meters of height and 100 meters away, it will disengage the launch assist mode. By that time, you should be um, back in control and having your goggles on. But here, I really want to test this, but also with a friend throwing the plane and me being in controls all the time. So I will, I will tell you how this works. But you can also use the, just the autopilot stabilizer function and throw it uh, and it will uh, control the ailerons. So I'm not sure if the launch assist mode is needed, but I will test it for sure. Okay, so thanks for watching this plane FPV video. Leave me some comments to what you think about this plane. Mm, bye.